Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is the scene that I'm going to be creating in this lesson here. And the lesson here, for the most part, is about process. In a lot of scenes, what we're doing is we're stamping out our main imagery, sky figures and whatnot, and we're toning those in. We're fleshing out the scene with color. In this scene right here, what I used is the Cloud with Moon Large on a blank piece of cardstock. And for the most part, as far as the toning process goes, I lay down, I would say, 95% of the colors that are going to be used in here. And after I do that, what we have is a background that has our sky and land. Basically, it's, it's our lighting scheme. I have a moon and reflected light with a lot of different colors laid down already. And what I do is because the subject matter of the scene, uh, this frond large and palm cove, for the most part they're silhouette in nature, they're strong solid shapes. I'm just taking those, inking it up in a dark color, in this case it was black, and stamping it right over the top of the, uh, the background. And uh, by doing so I um, kind of uh, avoided uh, the potential of inking this up to begin with, stamping it out in black and then toning over it with you know streaks of color and potentially smearing some of the uh, the ink that was already laid down. Now for the most part I don't really have to worry about that too much because the ink does penetrate the paper and it dries fairly quickly especially when you're stamping these images out onto you know a blank piece of paper but that potential exists when you're working with, you know, solid images that have a lot of surface area. It could puddle up in some areas, but I don't know. I don't think you really need to worry about that, but uh, in some instances you might. It depends on what kinds of inks you're using and what brands and how fast they dry and also um, the uh, relative humidity uh, of an area that you're uh, living in. Uh, can affect it. But anyways, for the most part, these kind of silhouette styles of scenes come together fairly quickly, I find. Uh, maybe it's because we're not so conscious of the imagery and having to work around them. We just do the background really fast and stamp over them, and it can have a nice dramatic, uh, you know, to dramatic effect. This scene, all told, is about a half an hour scene, I would say, uh, and probably work through I don't know, at least six, seven different colors in here and created a nice rich surface and just finished it off with a little bit of the uh, pigment ink, uh, the white pigment ink and the uh, white gel pen as always. So, Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene and uh, thanks again for watching. Okay, let's see here. To get this scene started, I'm going to stamp out the cloud with moon large and uh, I'm going to approach the scene starting from the background uh, to the foreground. The imagery that we're going to use is the um, palm cove, um, spear fisherman large and um, the palm frond large for the most part. I'll go in and probably add in some of these uh, other little pebble, pebbly things in the water area. But let's get to the uh, the moon first, and I thought we would go maybe with a, a bottle green, or a, just a real dark green, like maybe a brown might look good too. I wanted to go with kind of a, a different color scheme, like maybe like an emerald green colored scheme or something like that, but maybe not quite so much. Um, but I tell you what, let's go with the, let's go with the uh, dark brown, number 18 Marvy pad here. Building up some ink here on the surface and maybe to get a little bit of variation, um, why not add in some other colors? Maybe that's the dark brown. This is a dark blue. Uh, Marvy pen. It's just called blue. It's the number three. It also comes in pad form. 
and I'm putting in a few streaks on this. It's inevitably it's going to pick up some of the um, uh, the brown. Other areas it's going to mix with the brown. And here's the manganese blue. Maybe get a little bit of variation in some areas. Okay, I'm kind of wiping off some of that brown or whatever's down there, whatever I'm kind of going over. And so just kind of wipe it off like that, and you know, you pretty much have an unpolluted pen by doing so. You see it was kind of that brown or dark brown in it right there. And just kind of wipe it off a little bit and it should uh, clean off the tip. Okay. Um, I'll go for kind of the upper half of the uh, card, working on a vertical. Plenty of pressure, center pressuring especially. All right, so we get a little bit of variation here. I, I didn't press hard enough right there, but anyway, it won't matter. A uh, little bit of browns, a little bit of blues here and there. Okay. Now, I could stamp this out right now, but the image itself is, for the most part, it's it's a silhouette. It's mostly solid dark shapes, and so are the uh, the other images that I'm going to use in here. So, that being said, what I could do is I could just kind of approach the um, background first and then go into the uh, scene later on with the um, with the imagery and it won't affect it really um, okay now this is the moon right here and the water is going to be down below I want that moon to kind of stand out Okay, now this is a Distress Ink Green. It's called Peel Paint. It's kind of a cool looking green. Uh, Distress Inks are put out by Ranger and Ranger Inks. Um, it, it, it seems across the board, it seems like they use the same type of binder uh, in all their inks and I find their inks to be thick and slippery. So they make a really good uh, foundation color. Okay, now I want that moon to stand out, but I think in this scene I want it to kind of be a moody scene, you know, with a lot of atmosphere and whatnot. So I'm gonna mute the moon a little bit with a little bit of tone kind of going over it. Not all of it, maybe I'll leave a little bit of white, but for the most part I'll kind of add a little bit of tone over it with a, kind of a dry brushing technique, you know, have your tip fairly dry. Okay, now I'm going over this um, area right here so that there's kind of horizontal, um, whatever, was it, striations or whatnot. So I want that to be kind of the direction that the, the water's moving in. That's the reason why I'm not, you know, turning this around and going in an upward motion. Okay, I'm kind of keeping it, you know, coming in from the, uh, the two sides of the, uh, uh, the card. Okay. If you want there to be some uh, brightness, some reflections of the moonlight coming off the water, then just leave some of the water as is, okay? Or so, you know, leave the, 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 the white of the card as is, in other words. Okay. Let's try something else. Let's try a uh, vintage photo distress ink. Kind of a brownish tone.
kind of doing it in the starting off with these distressings. These distressings, of course, are, you know, kind of a curated uh, grouping of uh, um, tones and uh, hue that are meant to look uh, aged. So, uh, and that's kind of what I'm going for in this scene. I think I, I want it to kind of look, uh, you know, like an old um, photograph or Maybe not look like it, but kind of give the, you know, kind of a, a little gist of it. All right, now let's try. This is a family of green tones right here. I don't know if I want to make it, you know, take it up into, uh, you know, a real kind of base green right there, but maybe I can go into it, uh, some of the lighter tones, um, green tones. This is the uh, pale green. It's a number 34. Uh, Marvy. The Marvies um, are a bit of a thinner ink. They're thin, but they're very. Uh, they have a lot of pigment in them, so they're not thin in terms of uh, saturation, but they're thin in terms of their consistency, so. I'm able to apply these on top of a kind of a thicker ink, and uh, these thinner inks will penetrate the thicker kind of foundation, but the thicker foundation is allowing me to really spread this around in a very uh, user-friendly way, okay? And so I'm able to get these smooth streaks down, thick to thin and not, it's important um, to, uh, to get a good foundation of those thicker inks, okay? So it's not just coverage, but it's saturation and penetration of the, uh, of the glossy cardstock that, uh, that kind of makes uh, this process nice and easy. And you're able to get these uh, saturations, you know, whatever types of uh, bright saturations uh, that you're, uh, you know, we're going to uh, try to attain. Okay, now I'm going to move up into the darker tones. Uh, by the way, that was uh, yellow-green, the uh, number 52. This is a jungle green, number 96, kind of moving up incrementally into darker tones. And I think I, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, um, it's important to uh, remember, if you want that to remain light, to not go into your darker tones now and just to uh, ink them out. You know, if you want to retain that area of white or light, then just simply avoid those areas with the darker tones. So when I move up into the darker tones, I'm kind of being, becoming a lot more perimeter oriented in terms of the application of those colors, okay? I don't take them in quite as far as I did with the, uh, the previous colors. Okay, the previous colors meaning uh, in most cases will be lighter values if you're kind of working in this uh, um, method. As you can see on my blotter paper, you know, there's a lot of ink over there because a lot of times I'm kind of stamping, you know, a lot of the ink on the outside of the card when I'm starting out. So you can tell how perimeter orient I'm oriented I'm getting. Okay. Nighttime scene. Let's go with uh, let's go with that same bottle green. Uh, oh, that one's really, really dark, and I can tell the pad is fairly wet too. You know, I use a lot more of my lighter colors than I do my darker colors. Um, not 
talking about in terms of the impressions that I'm making with them, but uh, but the coloring process. So my darker colors quite often are really, really wet because again, I don't use as much of those as I do the lighter colors because the lighter colors come into the scene um, more than the, uh, the darker colors do. more coverage with your uh, lighter tones. Okay, so pretty quick and easy background here. Uh, about 12, 13 minutes into this video, and some of it was, you know, stamping out the uh, moon, but for the most part, you know, the coloring process is almost over. Um, I could have this ripply water pattern here, why not? I used this on a previous uh, lesson, and I just didn't happen to put it away, and so uh, I'm going to use it here. But I'm going to put a few streaks in here, okay? And I just inked this up with the uh, jungle green, but let's go with a lighter impression of it because I'm stamping it into the lighter area. I just I was thinking I just kind of want a hint of it. Let's carry this out with a second impression to the bottom of the card, like so. I kind of like that, so I'm going to add a little bit more to each side of the scene. Okay, now one of the things I always do is to, um, after I stamp out something like that, like a texture, what I do is I go back in and I smooth that out a little bit. You know, I'll run some more streaks to kind of incorporate that texture in with the background a little bit more so it's not so busy. I want it to kind of, that texture to kind of emerge from the, uh, the background, you know, or from the surface itself as opposed to, I don't want it to look like it's on top of the surface, you know, and somewhat separate. Okay, kind of giving this more of a streak. I kind of have this applicator kind of more on its side, giving these, you know, these thinner streaks like this as opposed to a big flat one like that. And I just stay on that one area and I, you know, kind of keep going across to staying in that one area. Okay. Um, Let's put a little bit of black on here right now. Just in tiny little corners of the scene. Actually, a good color to use on uh, the corners right here could be the, uh, the dark brown as well. Okay, so you see the, that little dark edge there and you can compare it to kind of the bottom edge that's with the black and that's without it, okay? Now, what I feel on my glossy cardstock is um, there's a little bit of a resistance to um, the color application because while this isn't wet to the touch, it's moist, so um, the ink isn't grabbing on to the, uh, the card very fast. So I, so I kind of have to stay there and tap into it a little bit. If I wipe across there, it's kind of, it's almost building up a little bit of ink, but then it's kind of wiping it off. So I don't get as much of a, you know, a, a, it doesn't apply as well as tapping. When you tap, you're kind of building up little 
bits of ink on the uh, surface on top of one another. If you're wiping it with pressure, it's kind of, you know, those little bits of ink that kind of uh, are on the page just uh, kind of potentially uh, wipe off. So you kind of have to change your touch depending on, um, you know, what uh, the card is feeling like to you at that point in the uh, in the process. Okay, creating a little bit of separation between sky and land. I'm adding a little bit more of this black in that separation right here and here. All right. Now the reason why I went with black, I, I knew I was gonna stamp the imagery out in black. And because the page is a little bit moist, I felt that if I stamp this out, this image, the impression might take a little bit of time to set up so that if I put some black over it, it might wipe the image. So I apply that ink uh, ahead of time. Now, if you're doing this at home and you want to, you know, decide if you want to add black later, I mean, you know, you can have the benefit of uh, kind of just letting it air dry, you know, or set up a little bit more, you know, the background, um, you know, for five minutes, but, you know, doing this for this instructional video, you kind of have to keep just going. Okay, building up some ink here. Image. I want a nice solid image. Okay. Position it about like so. Okay, now I'm standing up to apply pressure, especially to the center of the image. Okay. And what you can also do is you can let some of the ink, kind of let it sit for a little bit and let the ink transfer um, to the card. And while it's doing that, why don't I ink up some of this palm frond and the palm frond is fairly large. It's reiterating um, the imagery that's in the scene, which are palm trees. use it uh, two or three times probably, just at different angles. Okay, there's one in the corner. Left corner, and we go up a little bit higher. Stamping this, I don't know, 50% of it is at least off the, uh, off the page. Maybe go with another one down here, smaller version. It's the same version, but I'm just using a smaller piece, so it looks like a smaller frond coming in there. Okay. Spear Fisherman. If he's going to be standing in the water, I'm going to have to, we don't want his legs to be showing like that, so I'm going to wipe off kind of a lot of his legs right down here uh, with a paper towel before I make the impression. 
give good even pressure. Don't squash it because the uh, spear is a fairly delicate area. Okay, so there's our little subject matter down there. Kind of submerged in the shallows. And kind of, we can see these rocks on um, this image down here. All right. Now, if we're to kind of create um, a little bit more of a, a feeling of a transparency um, when it comes to water and being able to see through the surface of the water, why not go with um, some more impressions of that? I'm trying to think of a color to stamp these rocks in. This is the tiny rocks uh, stamp here. And it's unmounted, actually. Okay. And let's get, that's a good color for it, that uh, peeled paint distress ink. Okay, well, why don't we go for a, we can go for a second impression where it's lighter. Third impression. All right, going a little crazy with that, but I really like the look. So, um, let's layer it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I was thinking about doing it in black. Let's do it in the bottle green. Bottle green is so dark, it's almost black itself, but let's see. Or I could just kind of blotted it off a little bit. darker version of it in the uh, darker areas of the of the card all right a little spear fishing at night um Let's go with a little bit more black in at least two of the four corners. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, let's go down here too. Kind of close off the composition and really bring the viewer's eye to the uh, center of the card. Um, we know now where the island areas down here. Well, not island, but the cove rocks are. So let's add a little bit more uh, shadow down in that area. What that will do is hopefully kind of anchor the image into the scene a little bit more. Now we have those rocks are casting a shadow instead of them just kind of floating in that area. and stuff are coming out of the background again instead of floating on a you know tonal surface okay the coloring process is you know it's for the most part it's done um, this is a looks like an olive colored pen 
It's kind of the same color as this peeled paint. This is an alcohol-based pen. And you can get in here and kind of bring uh, some fine, detailed uh, coloring and shading into these areas, kind of giving those rocks opacity by having them cast a little bit of a shadow. Do you absolutely need this? No, you don't. But um, maybe I'll have some shadows down here from these some of these uh, rocks that I stamped in the water. Uh, the reason why I'm using these pens is a lot of you have uh, you know, alcohol-based markers out there, and uh, what a perfect opportunity to uh, to use them, you know, in a maybe in a little bit of a different way, or maybe it's the same way that you use them. This is a brown right here. I don't like that brown too much, but let's. I don't like it individually, but let's blend it now. I'm just blending it with another uh, light green again. Okay. Adding some little bit of streaks down in here in the water. Okay. Alright. White gel pen. Tops of the rocks are light. Adding. I'll do this on one side and I'll bring the camera in so you can kind of see. I do a little compare, contrast from the other side. Okay. You can see right over here where I've added the little white highlights to the tops of some of these rocks. In the shallows, added some of those highlights to some of those submerged rocks. Over here, there isn't any. I feel that these little touches over here make the rocks seem a little bit more three-dimensional. Okay, let's do the same for the rocks on the other side. some into the water. Add more in the, the lit areas, the lighter areas of the uh, scene. The darker areas of white dot will stand out much more. If you have a green pen, you know, you can use it in here, too, for a slightly more subtle uh, touch. All right. See where these palm uh, trees kind of get lost in the, the background a touch. You can put a few little highlights on those if you want to, just to kind of capture some of that moonlight and to pull the uh, objects out from the background. You can see right there. See those little bits in there? I didn't really use it too much. some life into the uh, scene. Kind of 
makes things look a little bit more uh, shimmering and lively, I, I would say. This is a bit of the pigment ink. of the uh, figure. And the base of some of these rocks. Just for a little bit of a textural statement. Okay, let's see if I can get in here a little bit more. No, that's as far as I can zoom in. Okay, the trees right around the moon, okay. I've retained some of the, uh, the lightness of the moon there. So those trees are nice and solid, a nice solid silhouette against the moon, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hopefully kind of turn the trees uh, visually by putting some light on a side of the tree that's next to the, uh, the moon. You, can you see right here where that's uh, right there and there on the side, see on the uh, left side of the tree farther away from the moon. I, I didn't put it so what I'm saying is that uh, by doing that, I'm saying that the tree is not flat. You know, it's it's a you know it's representing a three-dimensional uh, tree where some of it is being affected by the light like that. Okay, so it kind of you know it uh, reinforces lighting direction, and down here it kind of uh, acts as. Uh, uh, you know, works for, for, uh, kind of expanding the, uh, uh, textural range of the scene, and it, uh, it also kind of illuminates areas because it's, um, light, quite often over dark. And it uh, represents the uh, kind of the space between the objects. It's that awareness of uh, things in you know the air and atmosphere. Okay, so that is the scene right there. Uh, pretty simple. Came together fast, especially when you're working with silhouettes. And I think that's what we used to call it. I think I used to call it silhouetting or something like that, doing the background first and stamping right over it. It's kind of like a, they do 